it going guys? Today I'm going to show you how I installed these permanent RGB LED lights outside on a garden wall. I've had this idea for a while and it was a little complicated, um, but I'll show you all the things that I learned along the way and I'm very happy with how it turned out. So in terms of materials, I chose these flexible waterproof RGB strips, which is very important to eat the waterproof kind because this will be outdoors. Now each kit comes with its own remote and power brick, and I chose to go with the 32 foot option, which means it comes with two rolls each at 16 feet long. The difference between the waterproof and non-waterproof versions are that this one has a nice silicone coating over the top of it. I have several sharp turns in this layout and I got these little extension pieces to help with those turns and also adding length. I did not end up using as many as I originally thought I would and I'll explain more later. For all of the connections, I wanted to make sure that I had no problems in the future with waterproofing and stuff like that, so I got this heat shrink tubing, which covers the connection, and then when you heat it up, it seals that closed. I originally thought I was going to use this little lighter to do that, but I decided to go with a hair dryer, which is a safer alternative. Got some Gorilla Glue to go along with the adhesive backing, because I don't quite trust what it comes with for this permanent installation. I also got these extension pieces which go from the junction box to the start of the light so I can choose exactly where I want it to start and have a nice clean look. This ended up being significantly longer than I originally anticipated so I had to coil it up and put it in this housing and I asked my sister who's an electrical engineer if there would be an issue with any kind of electromagnetic field because it's a coiled wire and she said since it's insulated this is not a problem. Finally, in my setup, it's going from an existing regular light bulb fixture, so I got this adapter to go from the light bulb to a standard outlet. And can't forget some clamps to hold it on place. Alright, let's get started. So, depending on your situation, how you want to set this up, getting power to it might look different from what I did. I conveniently have these existing outlet bulb things that are already installed into the garden wall itself so I just converted that and then have the power brick with all the wires and the receiver everything tucks nicely into this existing piece this is ideal for a number of reasons because it is mostly waterproof on the inside and there already is a switch inside the house to turn this on I tested the setup and it works great now here's where that heat shrink tubing comes in. I slide the tube over the connection, heat it up with the hairdryer, and it seals everything in. I think it turned out pretty darn good. I will leave links to all of the materials that I used in the description of this video. To get the alignment right, I temporarily used some of my clamps to hold where I think the tape is going to go. I then use the Gorilla Glue at all of the major points, which would be the start, about every foot, and then every corner. Not sure why I chose to do this project in December, because it is very cold and the glue had a little bit of trouble coming out, but the hairdryer conveniently made everything come out nice and smooth. I pulled the adhesive backing off just as far as I needed for the next segment, and then pulled it tight, making sure that it was aligned because this is a curved wall. Um, and then push that tight all the way up to where I have my next glue spot, clamp that in, and you're good to go. It was a bit of a tedious process, but I didn't really mind it too much. I actually had a little bit of fun, and it was cool to see the progress coming along. The Gorilla Glue took around 2 hours to set, and then 24 hours to fully cure. After the clamps had been on for 2 hours, I took the farthest one and moved it forward in this rotating pattern. Now here's our first corner, which is where things get interesting. If you look on the tape itself, you'll see that every three lights, so about every three inches, there's a little copper sort of connection piece, which is where you're allowed to cut it, and uh, it won't screw up anything. It's That's where you're meant to cut it for this connection piece. So I measured it out to the nearest cutting point, made sure to turn off the lights, and then cut them. For the connector piece, which is going to go on next, it's important to pull back the adhesive backing a little bit so you don't trap that inside, and also, since this is waterproof, you have to cut off the silicone portion so that there is a good connection. Since we're going to be applying the heat shrink tubing afterwards, uh, this is not really a problem because it's going to cover all the connectors to make sure it is still waterproof. Using these connectors is fairly straightforward, you just slide the tape into the little slot there and make sure there is a good connection with the wires on the inside. 
do the same thing for the other side and make sure that the cable is running the same way so the same wires are going to the same places on the two strips because if you twist it and have it upside down it will not work so make sure to test it as i'm doing here before you apply the heat shrink tubing otherwise you're going to have a bad day the heat shrink did take a little while and i think that's mostly because it was below freezing outside um, so if you're doing this in the summer obviously heat shrinking would happen faster um, but you know it worked pretty well i would recommend you get a slightly larger size than i got because it was pretty tight to uh, slide it on i will leave the link to the larger size heat shrink tubing below because um, i had plenty of you know room to go smaller but uh, it was just a little challenging to fit it over the connectors this was probably the most time consuming portion um, so i generally try to uh, do the heat sinking while the clamps were curing um, and that type of thing it was pretty satisfying to watch though Here's a progress update. I moved to the other side and you'll see I quickly learned that using those connector pieces really slowed it all down and overall will be less reliable than just continuing the strain itself. So I was able to sharply turn it by um, basically having the light strip sort of point inwards and then turn it 90 degrees and then keep going with clamps and glue and so far it is working well so that is why i did not use as many of those adapter pieces the connector pieces because um, i only really used them when i had to when i got to the end of a strip overall it all worked out though now inside the house i switched out the light switch with a programmable timer that has a ton of functionality to change when it comes on and turns off any day of the week and also will calibrate to dusk in your region. Very fancy. All right, so now for things that I learned that I might do differently if I were to do this again. So all of these LED strips are five volts, I believe, and this is basically the farthest you could push that without having to introduce more power along the way. You'll see at the end of these strips, um, a few of the colors, I think it's mostly the blue, um, sort of dies out a little bit, so it's not quite the same intensity as at the start, which is not something I was expecting. So if you are going longer than the strand itself, um, you might have some power issues if you are using five volts. Now they do sell some strips on Amazon that are a higher voltage, which basically solves this problem. So if you want to make sure that the color consistency is the same throughout the whole thing, I would recommend getting those, especially since this is a permanent installation, you want to do a good job. So the waterproof, possibly 10 or 12 volt RGB LED strips are the ones to get. Also, this is the most basic kind. There are individually programmable lights so you can do really complex things where like the lights chase down the line these can only be one solid color but you can change them so it's multicolor but the uh, the whole strip is going to be one color at one time overall though I am very pleased with how this turned out especially with the sort of underglow light that this provides with this setup if you were to pay to have this professionally done I would assume it would cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars and uh with everything that i purchased here it was under a hundred dollars and just with my time once again the link to everything i used is down in the description below thank you so much for watching and as always don't forget to keep it pro